So the story the story is that that USC tried for two years to get out of the LSU game, which is coming up in Las Vegas first mm-hmm. week of the season. Um, tried a number of ways to do it, including um, new AD Jen Cohen, who tried, couldn't get it done. As recently as late last year, like November. Mm-hmm. Um, tried to get out of it. Um, tried to use Trace Armstrong, former Gator legend, now a, a high-profile sports agent who represents both Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly to mediate it and convince Brian Kelly to convince LSU to get out of it. And As you wrote, your line said, it didn't work. Negative, it didn't work. <laughs> um, so they tried to get out of it, and no, they couldn't get out of it. So they're playing the game. Um, and it's I, – I, I wrote the story because I think it's interesting how, you know, in an age where the playoff now, we've gone down to a 12-team playoff, and more than likely it will be 14 by 2026, you know, there's no longer the excuse of running – from these non-conference games for anyone, okay? Including anyone who has a neutral site game, be it Florida, Georgia, be it Texas, Oklahoma, whoever. There's no more running away from these non-conference games because of quote-unquote budgets. Um, and it's, so that that's kind of the idea of that story. And as far as the, as the, uh, by the way, it's a great little note with that too, mm-hmm. that, that game. You know who the original, the original opponent for USC was? Who? The Gators. Was it Florida. Oh, it was. Yeah. Dan Mullen wanted it badly. But they couldn't, USC and Florida couldn't figure out their schedules. Mm-hmm. Like USC wanted it in 24 or 26, and Dan wanted it in 23 or 25. <laughs> so it mm-hmm. never happened, but but it, but it Mullen wanted it badly. Badly is what I was told. I mean, you know, what? That, to me as a former, as a former player, when you, you think your coach is running from competition, what is that implying about your roster? It's an indictment on your roster. You're saying that we don't want no parts of that team because they're in the SEC. What does that say about your roster and your team that you recruited, that you're afraid to play an SEC team? So here's the thing. The the game, by the way, was initially agreed to in 2019. This is after after they reached out to Dan about it, about Florida and USC. Right. So they so LSU and USC agreed in 2019. It wasn't officially signed until 2021. So it was still before Lincoln got there. Uh-huh. So yeah, that's going to be the, the excuse of look this was this was Clay Helton's idea this was his game I don't I don't want the game this is not how I, this is not philosophically how I want to start a season I'd much rather start a season when I'm playing in a new conference where there's nine conference games and I'm already playing Notre Dame as a non-conference opponent I don't want LSU I can get all of the ideas I understand all the ideas of why why Lincoln Riley would say that but once that game is there and once it's penciled in there's no getting out man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's and then well, and then to like try as late as last November through not only his new AD, not only the Trace Armstrong, but also Fox Sports got involved mm-hmm. because Fox didn't want USC's first game as a member of the Big Ten to be, to an be on an AB an ESPN property. It's gonna be oh, on ABC. Okay. Okay. And I was it's gonna a, say to be an L. And it will be that too. Yeah. And it will be a standalone primetime game. It's going to be the game of the of the night. And that's and Fox didn't want that. So all of that, all those guys the, the way I, the way I put it out was you're talking about a powerful AD, which Jen Cohen is, mm-hmm. okay, a powerful sports agent, which Trace Armstrong is, and a network television, and none of the three could get USC out of that game. Well, all, listen, all Lincoln had to do hey, did he not see LSU's defense last year? The amount of points that they gave up. <laughs> wait, I mean, that wait. alone should have calmed his nerves. His defense gives up forty points a game. The what old, is he worried bro, about? Have you watched yeah. his defense over? The I know they gave up. A, yeah. Listen, I, I, absolutely, they were terrible too. The over under would have been triple digits on this bad boy. It would have been one oh one guaranteed uh, because you could see a fifty five fifty two in a heartbeat field goal at the end to, to win it. But you're right. It should not strike fear in anybody facing that defense. No, they were terrible. It, look, Lincoln Riley, and we were having fun with this, you know, just talking about the idea that you know, these marquee games you you should not steer away from because no. it's gonna it's gonna put you front and center in the conversation when it comes to the committee deciding on the the field of twelve. It is a twelve team playoff, and the field of twelve is gonna mean something based on what your record is, how you stand in your conference, and who you played. Who you played out of your conference is going to make a big, big deal or a big impact on that committee, which I think is massive. I mean, it's also, look, if you're going to ask boosters to continue to throw money into NIL coffers, which, by the way, NIL is not going away just because all of a sudden now there's pay-for-play that's on the horizon. NIL is not going away. So if you're asking the boosters to give money to your program, to give money to your NIL coffers, there's there's no way that you can say we're going to play Louisiana Monroe Mm -hmm. every year. You you just can't do that, and I and 
now with them looking for more revenue streams, and I asked Scott Strickland this yesterday, you know, and I looked at him like, you know, talk to me like a fifth grader. It clearly, the easiest way to get more revenue is add conference games. Yeah. And he said, you're exactly right. I think people want to watch the SEC play the SEC. Because the problem this, is Scott's one of like maybe three or four ADs and presidents that want nine games in the SEC. Because the the the, mm-hmm. the conference that – all right, excuse, <clears throat> let, let me rephrase it this way. The schools that are more confident that they can compete on a toe-to-toe level with the other bigs sure. inside the conference are willing to do it. The ones that are – collecting checks, and I keep calling them field horses or also rands or whatever, I'm telling you, the Vandys of the world are in danger because of where this thing is going. Because well, the, but they're not, though, because they're still going to get that money from the league, so yeah, they're really I'm, not my, in my danger. My only point is, is that we're going to keep steering towards a super Division One. Yeah, you're not. Uh, yeah, you're I, not. I believe that, honestly. No, the more, yeah. the more, the more I talk to people, the more it's not going to be. It's mm-hmm. just going to be a situation where the SEC and the Big Ten rule, rule college football. It's – I it, it, look – Vandy, and I'm just throwing these guys out there because they're right. the quote-unquote smaller schools. Mississippi State, um, South Carolina, you know, you start talking about the programs that, you you know, you wouldn't think are that invested in football, but these guys are hard, believe me. Van, Vandy's new facility is a, a dream. Um, look, you you have to, the idea of, of Florida playing Auburn again, like, that was a great rivalry that just went by the way. Would you rather have see Florida play Auburn in the ninth game or see Florida play FAU? No, no. Florida-Auburn was mm. the oldest rivalry. And if you're paying players now, that. and these guys are getting paid $100,000, $200,000, dollars a year, mm-hmm. guess what? They can play Auburn instead of FAU. Yeah. Because they're now professionals. You can say they're amateurs. You can couch it by saying they're not paid, they're, they're not uh, employees. That's what they're trying to get away with now. Technically, they're not employees. Great. They're getting paid 100000 or more to play a game, okay? Mm-hmm. They're professionals. You can play Florida Auburn instead of Florida FAU now. 